Hey, Minnie, I just got out of work. Is everything ready to go for the vacation tomorrow? Hey, Greg. Yep, I have basically everything all ready to go. Although I guess it's not really a vacation, really. Didn't you say your friend was having a wedding in Hawaii? I think you said the two of you graduated together. Yeah, that's right. Seriously, though, it feels kind of weird going to a classmate's wedding. I mean, I already have a daughter in high school. Isn't that crazy? Well, I don't know. We are in our late 30s. Nowadays, I'd guess that this sort of thing isn't too uncommon. Yeah, maybe you're right. Come to think of it, a lot of the people coming to the wedding aren't married yet either. What even is the average age for the first marriage these days? Uh, Mid-30s? Yeah, it's probably around there. You're gonna do some sightseeing after the wedding, right? Yep, the plan is to be over there for three days. So I'll be home by early next week. Hey, don't worry about it. Take your time. Relax and enjoy yourself. You've earned it. Thanks, Greg. I can count on you to take care of the house while I'm gone, right? Oh, and if you could also keep an eye on Holly, that would be great. She's got a lot of studying to do, so could you maybe do a bit more of the housework just to take the burden off of her? Sure thing. Will do. Oh, yeah. Um, am I going to be able to contact you while you're in Hawaii? Just in case I need to get in touch with you for emergencies and the like. Yeah, the hotel I'm staying at has Wi-Fi, so you should be fine. Plus, I checked with my carrier, and I get normal service in Hawaii. Oh, really? I've never been out of the continental 48 states, so I had no idea how that would work. <laughs> yeah, no worries. You'll be able to keep in touch with me. Technology sure is something, huh? It's crazy to compare today to when we were kids. Is there anything else you want to ask me right now? Let me think. Nah, I think I'm all good for now. Go ahead and have fun for all three of us, okay? Thanks, Greg. It's gonna be great. Oh, actually, I just remembered something. While I'm over there, it might take me longer than usual to respond to your texts. <laughs> you don't need to worry about that at all. Why'd you say that? I'll have Wi-Fi in the hotel, so that shouldn't be a problem. But if I go outside, there's no guarantee that I'll have a very good connection. So it might take your messages longer to get to me, and mine will take longer to get back to you. Hopefully it won't be a problem. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'm not planning on contacting you for anything much outside of emergencies anyway. Thanks for being so understanding. Okay, well, I'm about to head home. You're leaving first thing in the morning, right? You should probably go to bed early. Yep, I was planning to. Thanks so much for taking care of so much for me while I'll be away. I really appreciate it. Hey, Greg. The wedding just ended. It was wonderful. The bride's dress was gorgeous, and you wouldn't believe the scenery here. Sounds like you're having fun. <laughs> I'm glad you're able to go. Me too. Seriously, Greg, I don't know how to thank you for giving me the okay to come to this wedding. You're always working so hard taking care of the house, and... Holly, this is the least I can do to thank you. You're going sightseeing tomorrow, right? Don't worry about a thing. We're doing totally fine over here. You go out and enjoy yourself. I definitely will. There are a ton of places I want to go while I'm here. A few of my friends are going to come along with me, too. It's going to be great. Just don't forget to get us a good souvenir, okay? <laughs> Holly said that she wants something chocolate. And if you forget, she'll never forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> I won't forget. I'm going to go to the store before I go back to the airport to get some souvenirs. Holly wants chocolate, then. Got it. Thanks. Oh, by the way, I heard this from Holly today. Apparently, there was a car accident near her school. What's scary is it was on the same road that Holly always walks down on her way to school. Really? Wow, that's scary. There are a ton of small roads intersecting around there, and the stop signs and all that are really hard to see. I hear there are a lot of accidents there. Yeah, that's exactly what Holly said. She was not all that surprised that there was an accident. 
A while ago, she actually saw one happen in real time. Someone should do something about that area. Like, move the signs around, or remake some of the roads. Do something! Man, remaking those roads would be a pretty big task. Though, I'd take her to school myself if I could. I work so early in the morning, I can't. It's really concerning. Well, she's been fine up until now, right? I'm sure she'll be fine. Holly's a high school student. She can take care of herself. Yeah, yeah, I'm not concerned about her doing anything dangerous. But it's the other people on the road that I'm concerned about. I can't control what the drivers do. Well, we don't really have any choice, do we? Her school is where it is. They can't move it. I know the school tells the students all the time to watch out for cars. Yeah, but still. Ow, what am I doing? You're on vacation. I shouldn't be bothering you with this. No, don't worry about it, Greg. She's our daughter. It's only natural we'd be concerned about her. I'm concerned about her just the same as you are. After I get back, I'll start driving her to school whenever I can. I'm sorry to force that on you, but that would make me feel a lot better. You're not forcing anything on me. I want to do it. Holly's my daughter, too, like I said. Okay, well, we're about to eat, so is it okay if I take off here? Yeah, go ahead. You take care of yourself, too, Minnie. Thanks, Greg. I'm pretty sure I'll be out of the hotel most of the day tomorrow. So I probably won't be able to respond to messages very much. I'll talk to you tomorrow evening, though. Gotcha. Have fun, Minnie. Greg, are you there? I just got a call from my mom. Is what she said true? Oh. Now you respond. I was trying to get a hold of you all day yesterday, but you didn't even read my messages. You're pretty late to the party. I told you yesterday, didn't I? Anyway, this isn't the time for us to be arguing like this. I heard that Holly got taken to the hospital. What happened to her? Is she okay? Holly's fine. Our relationship is another story altogether. Holly's fine? Oh, thank goodness. Wait, what? What about our relationship? Do I need to spell it out for you? We're through. Once you get back from your vacation, I'm divorcing you. What? How can you say that at a time like this? If this is some kind of a joke, you are sick, Greg. Oh, believe me, I really wish I were joking. Unfortunately, it's the truth. I'm dead serious. What are you talking about? Why are you talking like this? Are you asking me why? Think about it. I'm pretty sure you have a good idea why. Greg, what have I ever done to get you to divorce me? I'm already terrified about what's going on with Holly. How can you divorce me at a time like this? Is Holly really okay? Yeah, don't worry about her. She's fine. When she was taken to the hospital, they said she'd need an organ transplant. And since I couldn't do it, your dad stepped up and offered to do it. An organ transplant? How serious was this accident? What even happened? It's just like we talked about, that road to her school is super dangerous. A car ran off the road and was driving down the sidewalk. Oh my god. But that's not the only surprise. Uh, tell me. Why do you suppose I wasn't able to give Holly one of my organs, but your dad was? I told the doctor that he could take anything Holly needed from me, even my heart or lungs, but the doctor said no. He did? But why? Because I'm not Holly's real father. They did a test on me to see if my organs would be compatible with Holly, and the results showed that she's not my biological daughter. Holly is 16 years old, and I never had any idea that she wasn't mine. Care to explain? That's... Uh, that's not true! What's not true? You were cheating on me and got pregnant with Holly. Isn't that true? You hid it from me all these years. Tell me, exactly what am I saying right now that isn't true? Well, nothing to say for yourself? I thought as much. If I were in your position right now, I don't know what I'd say either. You're scum, Minnie. Hold on, calm down. It was... It was a mistake. I'm sorry. 
It was only one time, and then I got pregnant with Holly. How could I tell you about that? I'm done with you. I don't want to hear any of your excuses. Greg, come on, please. Please, Greg, hear me out. Holly's operation is about to start right now. So I'm not in the mood to listen to your pathetic excuses. For now, just get back here as soon as possible. We'll continue this conversation after Holly's operation is finished. Got it? I would love nothing more than to be able to come home now, but this is all too sudden. Daughter and father are having serious operations, Minnie. I don't care what you have to do to get back here right now. Just do it. Hey, Greg, how's Holly? Is she doing any better? Yeah, the surgery went perfectly, but that was several days ago. She's awake, alert, and looking pretty well, all things considered. If I didn't know any better, I'd say she looks like she was never even in an accident. Wow, that's great to hear. By the way, I had a little talk with Holly about you, and what's going to happen here on out. Hey, hold on just a second. Don't you think you're rushing things a bit too much? Think about Holly's condition. You shouldn't upset her like that. Don't blame me. I wasn't planning to bring it up until she got out of the hospital. Holly was the one who asked me about it. She asked me if maybe I wasn't her real father. What? She did? Why? Because her real father came to the hospital to visit her. I guess he came while I was at work one day. And he's the one who told Holly about everything. Oh no. You said that it was a mistake. That it was only once, right? But if that's true, that brings up a very big question. How did he know not only that Holly was in an accident, but even what hospital she was in and what her room number was? How am I supposed to know? I'm telling the truth. It was only once. You have to believe me. Oh yeah? He said that he heard about everything from you. And what's more, he said he heard from you while you were on your vacation in Hawaii. So I'm afraid you're going to have to think up a new excuse for that one. I'm sorry. The truth is, I was cheating on you after Holly was born, too. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought I'd be more shocked to hear you admit that, but, but I guess nothing you do surprises me anymore. But you have to believe just this one thing. You and Holly are the ones I really love, not him. He was just a fling. Our relationship was only ever physical. I have always been dedicated to our family. Do you think you could say that with a straight face to Holly? After you've lied to us and betrayed us for all these years. Could you look at your daughter in the eyes and say that? Well... Yeah, that's what I thought. You coward. All your excuses and apologies to me have just been a sorry attempt to save face. You couldn't lie to me, you're used to that. But Holly, not a chance. Hey, don't talk about me like I'm some monster. I love you, I've always loved you. Both you and Holly, you can't treat me like this. If you really loved me, then why didn't you tell me the truth the moment you got pregnant with Holly? How could I? I didn't want to hurt you. It's been 16 years, Minnie. 16! 16 years have gone by since I became Holly's dad. Don't you get it? It hurts way more finding out after all this time than it would have if you were just honest with me from the beginning. I found out my daughter isn't my daughter while she was in the hospital on the operating table. I'm sorry. Next, let's talk about Holly. If you really loved Holly, then why didn't you divorce me and let her grow up with her real dad? Don't you think that would have been better for Holly? Are you kidding? That guy's never held down a steady job. He can barely support himself, much less a wife and daughter. Oh, I see. So he used me to raise his daughter for him. All the while, not even thinking once about how much it would hurt Holly when she found out the truth. You don't love anyone but yourself. You don't love me or Holly. That's the only way you'd be able to do something as cold-blooded and cruel as what you did. That's not true. I never meant for any of this to happen. 
What's going on here? Do you think that everything would be fine if neither of us ever found out? Are you out of your mind? Holly and I aren't just some dolls that you can play house with. I'm not going to let you use us like this. So, you're really going to divorce me? Of course I am. We're completely disgusted with you, Minnie. We don't want to see you or your boyfriend's faces ever again. Fine, then I'll take full custody of Holly. You're not her father anyway. I'll take care of her just fine with her real dad. I'm not letting you or that guy get your filthy hands on Holly. Neither of you have any right to call yourself Holly's parents. I'll take care of her by myself. But we're her real parents. You can't keep her from us. Maybe I can't, but Holly can. She says she doesn't want anything to do with you. She says that I'm her only real parent. What? I don't believe you. Believe it or not, you're getting your just desserts for what you did to her. You messed up so bad that your daughter, who you've been with for 16 years, doesn't even want to speak to you anymore. I don't care what she says. I'm her real mom, and I'm taking her to live with her real dad. I won't take no for an answer. Aren't you forgetting something? She's 16. She can legally choose for herself now. So I'm sorry, but you have no choice but to accept no for an answer. Now get lost and never speak to us again. But she's our daughter. How can you steal our daughter from us? I told you, Holly is my daughter. And Holly feels the same way about me. So no, you're not Holly's parents. You can't think of anyone but yourselves. Not even your own daughter. You're nothing but a lying, cheating, heartless, soulless scumbag. After that, Minnie and I got officially divorced. With the help of Minnie's parents, I was able to get hard evidence of her affair from her cell phone. I also sued her for infidelity. As for child support, since Holly's already 16 and she's refusing to see Minnie or her boyfriend, I decided not to demand it. I also sued Holly's biological father for his part in the affair. The jury considered the fact that he knowingly slept with a married woman, got her pregnant, and continued the relationship for almost two decades, and awarded me a colossal amount in damages. As a result, both Minnie and her boyfriend are in pretty dire financial straits. Neither of them have much in terms of employable skills, so... I'm sure they'll be struggling for practically the rest of their lives because of this. Good. Serves them both right. Through all of this, Holly decided to stick with me of her own free will. We're currently living a nice and quiet lifestyle with just the two of us. Honestly, for a little while we were a bit unsure about how to continue our relationship, now that we know we're not actually biologically related. But in the end, that gives us a bond that goes much, much deeper than just simple genetics. So what, we're not blood-related. She still knows who her real father is. And I'm more committed than ever to be the best father that I can possibly be, and one that Holly can be truly proud of. Davis, you told me that you'd be coming home earlier tonight, right? Ah, I'm sorry about that. There's a dinner that I'll have to go to tonight. Do you mind if I'm home early tomorrow? A dinner? You mean you're going out for drinks again tonight? Drinking is also a very important part of my job. Honestly, I didn't even want to go tonight. Then why didn't you tell them that tonight you already had plans and couldn't go? Last week, you were out for more than half the week drinking, right? I had work and some people that I needed to meet up with then. I happen to have work as well, but you don't see me going out to drink every night. Well, you and I have very different expectations that we need to meet. Don't act like the two of us are equals here. You also happen to be a woman, right? You don't get invited out to have drinks as often as men do. Are you going to be coming home earlier than me tomorrow? I will, probably. Not probably, right? I have some things I'd like to talk with you about. I've been asking you to come home so that we can chat about things for a while now, right? Then why not talk with me now? I'll listen to what you have to say to me while I eat. Uh, but uh, don't call me or anything like that, okay? You wouldn't want anyone around me hearing that nasally voice of yours, right? <laughs> so you know I'm going to be upset with you then? Whenever you say you have something you want to talk with me about, that usually means that you're upset about something with me. Then I'll tell you what's on my mind. 
We are in $800 worth of debt from last month's bills. And this month, we'll be getting into $1,000 worth of debt. Wait, are you kidding me? Why is that happening to us? That's because of you and your mom, Davis. Huh? You're blaming my mom and I for that? First of all, you go out too often to go out drinking every night. If you were just using your money to do all of that, then I wouldn't be complaining right now. But for about half the month, you are borrowing money from me in order to go out and drink even more often, right? I would really like you to stop putting us in debt with your drinking habit. Look, I have to do that to maintain good relations at work. You can't blame me for something I must do. If it was really for work, then the company would be covering the cost, right? But it's not for work. Well, there are times when I've got to take a little break from work by going out to drink, you know? Well, maybe you can talk to your boss next time and ask him to have the company cover your drinking breaks as well. Or better yet, just stay on the clock while you go and drink, so that way you're at least being paid to do it. I can't ask something like that. I'm not in that kind of position right now. Then when are you going to go out drink like that? Please only use your money for it. I do not like looking at our debt growing bigger and bigger every month due to you going out every night to drink. And then, there's the money you've been sending to your mom. It should only be $300 a month, but recently it's gone up to $500, and this month, $600, right? I can't help any of that. Things are starting to go up in price now, so it's costing her more money to pay for herself. From the looks of it, your mom loves going to play slots, though. What's wrong with going out to gamble occasionally? That's one of the only things that gives her joy in her old age. I am not sending her money every month so that she can gamble it away. Tell her to settle down a little over there. Just the other day, your mom was calling for me to stop by the casino on my way home from work. Did you know that? She wanted another hundred from me. My mom really loves those slots, okay? She must have been winning that day. Or perhaps since she was asking for more money, she wasn't winning. <laughs> I don't care about her winning or losing. Honestly, this has all gotten a little too much out of hand for my taste. The reason I'm giving her money in the first place is because she said she needed more money for food and bills. I do not like that going towards her gambling addiction. Can you do something about that, please? Just don't think about her gambling it away, then. Think of it as her putting money towards keeping her brain healthy and by thinking about numbers. Well, there are other less expensive things she could be doing than to keep her brain healthy. If she was using her own money to do all of that, I would not care. But she is using my hard-earned money to go to the casino. If she continues to gamble it all away, then sooner or later we'll be out of money as well. Then it will be us that can't live our lives the way we are right now. No drinking for you, and no food at home for any of us. But even though we're in a little bit of debt right now, we're still able to live our lives, right? That's because I'm having to use the money I made when I was single to pay for that debt off. Uh, wait, is that right? Now that you've said that, you always have been so serious about your future. How much money do you have left in your savings? You think I'm going to tell you that now? No way! It's my money from before I married you, and I don't want you to be using it in. You and I are married, though, so you should be willing to share your money with me now. Well, you don't see me asking you any money you saved up before we got married. You already told me before why we shouldn't be asking one another about it anyway, right? Because you didn't think money in our private savings needed to be shared with one another. Did I really say something like that before? Yes, you did. Then how much money have we put away into our savings since we've been married? Right now, there is around $18,000 in there. What? That's how much there is in there? Hold on, then we're nowhere close to being in debt yet. <laughs> we still have plenty of money to work with. Are you freaking kidding me right now, Davis? That money is being put away for our future, in case we choose to have kids or if there is an emergency. Don't you even dare touch any of it. We've only been married for two years, right? I don't think that we need to be getting all too worked up about our future just yet. I like to think that we haven't been saving as much money as we could be right now. I mean, you and I are both working full-time right now, so we should have at least double the savings by now. You think so? Anyway, for the time being, I want you to rethink giving your mom any more money. And as for the amount of times you go out to drink, I'd like you to cut back a bit more. Hmm. Alright then. I'll have a chat about this with my mom then. Please do so. If by next month things aren't getting any better, then I'll give your mom a call and have a chat with her directly. Hey Stella, don't you start picking on my mom now. What? I just gotten a call from her where she was crying. You started being real strict with her about the money that we give her each month, right? I just asked her to start working on saving up some of her own money before we send her anything else. That's all I said to her. None of that was meant to be strict. I just wanted to be clear to her how I felt about her spending our money like that. If anything, though, she was the one that was starting to get all heated about everything while I was talking to her. Well, right now my mom feels as though things are a matter of life or death. She's already having to use up a couple of her coupons to get any food at the grocery store. 
If we stop sending her any money, she's not going to be able to support herself anymore. She felt as though you were making things seem as though they'd be better for you if she wasn't around. I don't think I ever said anything as heartless as that to her, though. Well, everyone takes words differently. But here's the thing. Do you really find it okay to make my mom suffer by not sending her as much money anymore per month? I was just trying to figure out what all she was using her money on each month. She gets money from her social security every month as well, right? I would like to know just how much she needs from us each month in order to stay afloat. And that's without including the amount she wants to spend on the slot machine. If she is really having issues with money, then perhaps we need to talk with her about ways to better save. She is my mom, Stella, so you need to be more kind to her when asking things like that. And when it comes to money, be more generous, please. We're not going to make her live on the edge every and each month just by giving her the bare minimum. You were also the one that said earlier that you don't want to have my mom living with us, right? If you don't start giving her enough money each month to make it by comfortably, then she might have to move. You understand that, right? Well, before we start talking about having her move in with us, perhaps she needs to give up on gambling. How about that? This month, she hasn't even been going to the casino that much. That's what she told me. And that was after I told her to calm down a little on the slots. She listened to what I asked, so you can't continue to be so cruel to her. When I was on the phone with her today, it seemed like she was at the casino. Maybe you just happened to call her on one of the rare days when she was at the casino is all. Anyways, I'm gonna go to my mom's house today and comfort her after what you did to her. I'll be having dinner with her as well. Fine. But could you please tell your mom that I wasn't trying to make her feel bad or anything today? And after that, could you please ask her how much she's spending on slots each month? And how much she actually needs for necessities? She's not going to know all that if I ask her. Then have her start to write down how much she's spending so that we know. Alright, fine. If I have a chance to, I'll ask. But don't get your hopes up. She's already in shock right now because she's afraid we'll stop sending her money. Then tell her that we'll only be sending her the amount she needs each month. That's why I need to know how much that amount is. Please get that information from your mom for me. Stella, do you have any idea where I am right now? What? At this time, you should be at work, right? I'm at the hospital. The hospital? Did something happen to you? Because of how mean you've been to my mom, she's suffering neurosis right now. She was acting all strange, so I decided to take her into the emergency room. How does that have to do with me being mean to her? And since when have I been mean to her? Behind my back, you've been complaining about all sorts of things to my mom, right? It's your fault we can't save any money. You've been taking everything out on her when she's not to blame for anything. I have not been complaining to her like that. Ugh. You can stop lying about this already. I need to divorce a total witch like you. Your behavior is ruining both my mom's life and mine. And of course, I'm gonna get a settlement from you as well for mentally damaging my mom. You better get ready for when my lawyer gets here. Ah, so that's what this is about. <laughs> that's actually quite entertaining. Uh, huh? Are you actually that screwed up in the head or something? My mom has gone neurotic because of you. If she's suffering from neurosis now, she can't gamble anymore, correct? <laughs> uh, that's right. She's no longer having the ability to enjoy the one thing that made her happy. Because of you, my mom has no reason to live anymore. That's why I'm gonna make you pay for that. Until my mom is mentally stable again, you're going to have to pay for her to see a therapist and pay for all her other needs as well. I'll make you. And when you get home today, you can sign that divorce form from me immediately. I'll sign that form for you. But you're going to be paying for all you've done as well. Huh? What have I done? What do I have to pay for? I want you to pay for not being able to take responsibility for what you said to me before. After this, there better be no crying about not wanting this divorce anymore. I would never ask to stay with you any longer than I have to. We'll see about that then. Let's get to some of the facts then. Right now, I can see your mom going into the casino to play to make some more plays in the slot machine. What are you going on about? She's with me right now laying in the hospital bed. Alright, Davis. Then can you please tell that to my friend who has also seen your mom going into that casino to gamble some more? I'm not sure she's going to trust you on that one. And actually... You know about how your mom always likes to call and ask me to stop by to drop off some more money for her while she's playing? My friend has seen that happen all the time as well, and tells me every time now the moment she sees your mom going in and out of there. Uh, huh? Recently, you've been going back to your mom's house pretty often, right? That's because she asked for me to go home to her. And what you're really trying to say is that you're going out for more drinks, right? You're not able to get any more money from me directly in order to do that. But while I'm not looking, thinking you're heading to your mom's house, you reach into my purse and take $100 from me, right? 
I'm not doing something like that. I knew it was happening, so I made sure to plant $100 bills in there in order to lure you in more. Also, you always tell me to be more kind to your mom when it comes to handling her money for her gambling addiction. Right? Well, I didn't ask you to look into how much your mom is spending each month, so that I had an idea of how much she actually needed. You then forced me to have to end up calling her again, because you never actually did anything I asked you. And when I did, I never thought you had made such a devious plan as that. What are you talking about? What plan? I have no idea what any of this is about. You thought you could get even more money from me by divorcing and getting a settlement, right? And normally in a divorce, the couple has to split their properties as well, right? Well, you wanted both part of the monies I've been saving up, and the settlement for claiming I was the one that caused your mom to become mentally ill. Something tells me you went through all this effort because you had to look at how much money was in my private savings account. Is that true? Is that why you planned all of this out? Yeah, I haven't looked at that account. Well, let's just say you didn't know. I'm sure there are other things that, that will get you to confess. I'll divorce you like you're wanting. I've been wanting one myself ever since you started taking money from my purse like that. But if you think that you can really get a settlement out of me, then show me how you'll legally do that. Bring me that lawyer of yours you said you have ready. <laughs> Goodbye now, David. Stella, please, come back to the house. I don't have any reason to be going back there. I've already moved into my new place. And besides, you'll only be living in that house until the end of this month. So shouldn't you be working at getting ready to move out of there? I'm sorry. I am so sorry. About what, Davis? About how I made you look bad and got a divorce from you. Just for what? What about for all the money of mine you took to go out and drink every single night? And what about for never helping me fix your mother's spending habits that were terrible? You're not going to apologize for any of that? I'll apologize for all of that as well, okay? So can you please just find a way to come back to me? I don't want to be divorced anymore. You're the one that wanted the divorce though, right? And not only were you trying to make me seem like the bad guy, but you also blamed me for your mother's faked mental illness. And we're going to get a settlement from me for that. I don't want you back in my life, you chump. But at the time, I needed some way to get money. <laughs> Did you find out about how your mom has been in debt? You would really choose to get a divorce all because of your mom's debt, though? You should have just talked with me about her debt from the moment you found out, and things could have been fine. I'm sure that would have been the right choice. But I could never bring up the fact that she's in $30,000 worth of debt. And I was thinking that if I brought that up with you, then you would definitely say that you wanted to forget about my mom. Come on now, Davis. That's not it at all, is it? You just didn't like the idea of me going to your mom anymore to lecture her about not to spend money on her gambling, right? And let's not forget about your spending habits either. You got one good look at the amount of money in my private savings and thought to yourself you wanted a piece of that and thought a settlement would be the best, best way to get it, right? That's why things are the way they are right now. That's not all completely true. Don't tell me that's not all the truth when you've been trying to get my money this whole time. If I was wrong, then you wouldn't be trying so hard to get back at me right now. If you really wanted that divorce because you didn't like the way I treated your mom, then you wouldn't be asking for me back, would you? Are you going to even be able to get a settlement from me now like you were hoping? I'm sorry. I will take your apologies, but there will be no forgiveness. You can try your best to stop the divorce, but I'll make sure it gets settled in the courtroom. But if I'm thrown away by you now, I won't be able to carry on with the rest of my life. And if I go back to my mom's house, then she's going to make me start to pay for her for sure. Then don't go back to her. But I'm going to lose this house soon. I don't have the money right now to move into a new place right now, so I'm really stuck right now. Also, I can't turn my mom away. And that's why you're not in need of my help again? I am not your wallet, Davis. I never said that you were, though. Bullcrap. This whole time, I've been the one having to pay for everything. And when I started to say no to you, you started to steal money out of my purse. All just so you could go out and drink your responsibilities away. I will never forgive you for any of that. I shouldn't have to. But for a while, I was going to just let it happen, until you started to blame me saying that I was bullying your mom or something like that. I'm really, really sorry. I think that I've taken advantage of you multiple times now. You don't think you've taken advantage of me? You know you have. Anytime I was trying to get you to listen to our financial situation regarding the bills, you never took me seriously. All you did was sit there continuing with those bad habits of drinking and whining. Well, there you have it. This is the fruits of your labor. I will never go out to drink again, and I'll start to take things seriously about my mom. So please, don't throw me away. I can't pay off all that $30,000 by myself. I really don't care about you going out to drink or not anymore. You're nothing to me now, 
so go on ahead and keep it up. You'll be lucky if your liver fails tonight, and you never have to clean up your mom's mess. And if it doesn't, well, just know that you'll have loads of hell to pay. Hey, come on now. I really love you, Stella. So please, don't leave me. But just the other day, weren't you trying to get a settlement out of me? How can you love someone still, even after trying something like that? You were really hoping that you get at least a small percentage of what's in my saving. But you weren't able to get a settlement from me, and that's why you want me back now. Your plan has failed you, Davis. This is what happens when you love money more than you love your own wife. I'm so freaking sorry, okay? Forgive me, please. Help me, please. Stella, don't throw a man like me away. Shut up. You already threw me away weeks ago. You threw me away the moment you started blaming me for your mom becoming mentally ill. If you're going to continue to sit there unable to make up your mind about wanting a divorce or not, causing me to have to keep listening to you cry and beg for money, then I'm going to have a lawyer come to your house and hit you with a restraining order. And then you'll be hit with a settlement. You'll have to pay me for causing me mental harm as well because of all the anxiety I've suffered through. Do you want to have to pay that on top of the settlement I'm already getting from you for stealing my money? If not, then you shut the hell up and let this divorce happen, you freaking baby. After that, Davis went ahead and shut up about the divorce and let it become finalized at the courthouse. There was meant to be a splitting of our properties, but adding in all the money he both got from my private savings account already and the amount he stole from my purse, he only got a few hundred bucks. After that, Davis went back to his mom's house and is living with her now. Right now, he's trying his best to pay off all the debt his mother is in, but due to her constant gambling, he's never able to pay anything off. He hasn't been able to go out drinking anymore, and his stress levels have only continued to rise, leading to him having an outburst towards his mother, which I was told about later. Of course, I didn't reply to his message about it, as there's nothing about that man I want to go back to. Honestly, I'm so happy we got that divorce at the time that we did, because I would not want to be around that man while he's having his breakdown. I think to myself sometimes why I stayed with him for as long as I had, when he did nothing but cause me trouble. Of course, a part of me loved him still, and I wanted to make sure that our family was going to be okay, but considering I was the only one trying to have a good life, there was no point in continuing on with him. Also, seeing him start to steal money from his own wife made me want to throw up, so I am thankful for every day I get to wake up in a bed that doesn't have his alcohol-filled self in it. From now on, I'm going to take some time for myself and use it to make sure my heart and mind can heal. I will learn to grow from what's happened this time, so that the next time I find a man who I want to marry, I know what red flags to watch out for. Thank you for watching and listening. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Also, feel free to leave a comment about what you thought of the story. We look forward to seeing you at the next story.